Uh, uh, respected uh, chair, co-chair, and uh, my co-panelists, dear friends, good evening and namaskar. I'm going to speak on ESG. I think all the sessions perhaps have been more technical and quite intense. So it's going to be a little light session, but at the same time, very important. We discussed emissions. We discussed the decarbonation plans. We discussed many other aspects of the environment. But now, the important point is, unless all these factors are being assessed, and as to how the business activity is impacting the environment and the society, and how do we measure them, so that all the stakeholders should know that the business wherein they have the stakes, be it the investors, be it the lenders, employees, the society at last, they want to know that they have a lot of stakes in that business, that how responsibly that business is behaving so far the environment and the society is concerned. So ESG is a concept or a methodology by which the impact of the, all the business activities is measured and the captured in such a way that it could be reported to the stakeholders so that the stakeholders the knows and then accordingly they deal with that business. So it is a interwoven matrix of three aspects. Environment has been much talked about, but the society and the governance are equally important. Society would include even the employees. It's not only the community, it's the suppliers, the customers. So all are part of the society, how the business is impacting them. So we have this, uh, the metrics, wherein the, under the social, the workplace practices are covered. Human capital is very, very important for any business. In environment, the climate change and the pollution, and the governance, of course, the, unless the business is governed in a fashion that whatever they report is something reliable, then it's of no use. Environmental dimension under the ESG, the lastly, you know, the carbon footprint, and there is, you know, the, the system and the mechanism to capture the carbon footprint for the ESG purpose of the reporting. Energy usage, the wastage management, Circularity, use, reuse, and the recycle, the water conservation, resource efficiency, and the compliances with the environmental laws. So they, they are the methods devised. You know, the, how do we capture the impact of the business on all these factors? Then accordingly, a grading is done, which I'm going to cover in my next slides. Under the social dimension, its impact on the employees, the workplace safety, employees engagement, diversity, and inclusion. For customers, it is the customer satisfaction. Vendors, it is a vendor relationship. And community at last, would how the business is engaged in the social welfare programs, human rights, the gender equality and the race equality, etc., etc. Governance covers the investor's relationship, the conflict of interest, in the board decisions, business ethics, business accounting and audits, how transparent is the accounting method and the audit procedures, anti-bribery, anti-corruption policy, what the policy company or any business has, whistleblower policy and the political influence. ESG and sustainability, they are generally, you know, term as a similar terms, but there is a little, you know, the technical difference. When we talk of ESG, it is a specific and the measurable impact of the business on environment, society, and the governance. It, it is measured, ratings are being given, and accordingly the business is being assessed okay, how the business is faring on ESG front. The sustainability, the apart from the ESG element, it's, it's more in general, but apart from this thing, it also takes care of the economic aspect of the business. But generally for all the purposes, you know, the, the government regulations and all, when we talk of the sustainability, it is automatically, ESG is automatically is covered and is taken care. 
So we have the three, uh, uh, the part of the sustainability, the people, the people, the business has to be such, you know, the, it should be the equitable. It should be equitable to the people and it has to be, of course, if it is a business, it has to be economically viable, it has to be profitable, so it has to be viable. And for the planet, you know, the, it should not leave an impact that the planet becomes invariable. So coming to the ESC trains in India, the journey started in 2011 when the government of India in line with all advanced countries, they started something as a uh, matter of voluntarily reporting that the, all the businesses, houses, they were supposed to make a voluntarily report and report the impact of the business on these three factors. And 2015, you know, the 500 top listed companies were mandated to come out with a business responsibility report. So, of course, it has only a limited part of the sustainability. And now, in 2021, the top 1,000 listed companies at Stock Exchange, they are mandated, is mandatory for them to come out of the sustainability report. They call it, we call it as a BRSR. Business Responsibility and Sustainability Report. So coming back to the ESC train, the SEBI has mandated. So the corporates are now preparing. It was voluntarily till last year. Starting from the current financial year, it is mandatory for them. The format has been prescribed where all the parameters of the environment and as to how the business is impacting the environment on a measurable degrees, means if, if it comes on the environment, everything is measurable in terms of the carbon emissions. So even if there are other emissions, how much equivalent carbon emissions it would have, so there are some, you know, the practices defined. So, uh, you know, the knowing the importance of ESG and the investors, even they are dedicated in ESG funds, where they invest only on the companies which are ESG compliant. If the business is not faring well on these factors, so investors are not the willing to invest in the business. And even if they had to invest, the terms are much, much harsher. And the same is the situation with the lenders. The lenders now, apart from the financial performance of the company and other business parameters, they look at as to how the business is sensitive to ESG factors. And then accordingly they decide, they take the decision whether to land, because without finance, there cannot be any business activity. And hence, it's very, very important. So ESG investment, all the investment decisions, the world over, the large and the big investments, the ESG weightage is very, very high in the investment decisions. The ESG ratings, is the recent trains with the many, many rating agencies, including Crisil, which does the external credit rating. They also, they are engaged into uh, ESE ratings. And what the, what the rating they do is not based on the management and the company or the business approaching them to do the rating, no. They do the rating based on whatever information pertaining to ESG or sustainability of the business available on the net or through the sustainability report or any other media reports, whatever they have, and they come out with a rating, it is therefore very important for the business to see that it's not only doing well on these fronts, but they need to be transparent in terms of their disclosure, whether they do it on the website or they do it otherwise. So as I mentioned, the ESE fund, the dedicated fund, the some of the funds I have named. So if we look at three years back, the total ESG oriented funds were only 3,000 crore. And now, you know, the, the figure is higher than 12,500 crore. So now all the funds and the funds manager, they know it very well. If it is not sensitive to the ESG, then they are not investing in the funds and therefore the business automatically cannot think of growing. And these are some of the rating agencies. The Crisil is one of the Indian agencies, the rest are some internal agencies, but they do the ESE rating even for the Indian companies. And I 
just would like to share the Crisail, one of the rating agencies, the findings. If they have done the rating of 586, the companies in India, so as per their assessment, only the 20% of the companies, they are doing reasonably well on the ESE parameters. The 80% of them, they are either the weak or the below average. The, though the trend is improving, if they were scoring at X level, now it is a little better, but they are still weak or low. ESG parameters is still, despite of the fact the management of the business knowing well that without ESG due weightage in their investment or other management decisions, they cannot think of the surviving or even to grow the business in the mid to long term. The, still, the role of ESG unfortunately is poor in the decision making of the management. And these are the findings of the crisis. And the performance of the companies on environment, environmental parameters are the weaker as compared to, on environment front, they are very, very weak, though on the social and the governance, because of the other governance guidelines of the corporate and other laws of this country, they have started performing better on the governance front. So the, this we discussed, the ESG generally. And as in contrast to you know, the ESG presence in India, what is the what is the scene in you know the uh, European Union? The whole thing started in 1987. There was not much of progress in 28 years till 2015. Till the in the Paris Agreement 2015 as the part of the COP, uh, which gave birth to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, and this is where you know they, they could also took a lot of lead and you know they post their commitment. So 2019, this some of the important, the milestone I would like to very briefly mention, the European Green Deal in 2019, which you know they came out with a plan to mobilize one trillion euros to finance the transaction because you know the for the transition the lot of investment is required and they have always been starving for the investment and therefore they, the plan more than anything else was to how to mobilize. One, mil, one trillion euros, which is very, very large sum. In 2020, they came out with a taxonomy, which is, you know, the classification, green classification of the economic activities that can, classi that can be classified as sustainable, making it easier for the banks and the investors to identify the green and sustainable opportunity. But a lot of, they, they, they never wanted to leave it as a gray area, so they, they, they came out with the classification system. 2021, the EO introduced the plan for the next decade, which includes many actions, including CSRD, which is the sustainability information, which could be made available and the verifiable for a larger number of the companies. So all large companies, whether listed or not, which meets the two of the three the criteria, they are mandatorily being asked to make the sustainability reporting some in the prescribed format. So one of the criteria is 250 employees, as, as against the in, in India, where the top 1,000 listed companies by market capitalization have been mandated. There, the company with the 250 employees, or the turnover of 400 million, 40 million euros, or assets of the 20 million euros, if out of these three, the two are met, then they are mandatorily, they, they, they are supposed to issued to come out with the ESG reporting. So with these criteria, they expect over 50,000 companies to be covered. This has already been talked about, the 17 uh, SDGs. So the, my, the last, the part is the benefits, as we know. So if, uh, so far the environmental policies in the practice, it helps the company to attract more customers, allows the better access to the resources, lower energy, water consumption, therefore the reduced operational costs. So, you know, the boosting their profitability and higher valuation and the long-term viability. This is the how it helps uh, the business. And under, if the business scores better on the sustainable social practice, then of course, they have the greater social credibility. They, they can attract the better talents, the boost, the employees' morale, improves the productivity and the build a stronger community relations. On the governance factors, the govern, government support, the companies who are doing good on the governance, 
they have the larger government support subsidies and increasing regulatory overcoming the increasing regulatory pressure and the better investor relations business can develop the sustainability and ESG strategies that can achieve zero and the circularity goal in compliance with 2050 targets remains profitable that has been the finding and more and more business only last slide more and the more business are implementing implementing ESG best practices voluntarily so with this uh, i thank you very much for your the patient listening thank you very much